Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to discuss the differences between the direct method statement of cash flows and the indirect method statement of cash flows, two different ways that a company could choose to present its cash flow information. So here we go. Um, one thing I'm going to state right up front so that it's crystal clear is when it comes to the direct method and indirect method statement of cash flows, the only piece of the entire statement that is different between the two is the way that the cash flows from operating activities are presented. So the headers will be the same, cash flows from investing activities will be the same, cash flows from financing activities will be the same, the sum totals at the bottom where you show net change in cash, where you show beginning cash, where you show ending cash, all of that is identical whether or not you use the direct method or the indirect method. The only thing that changes is how you present the operating activity section. So how does it differ? Let's start with direct method statement of cash flows. In this operating section, you will show literally line by line the actual cash inflows and outflows from operations. So you might literally say, for example, you might say cash collected from customers, and then you would show a positive number, the cash inflow from the um, uh, uh, customers. Or you might say cash paid to suppliers, and then you'd show a number in parentheses, a cash outflow to your suppliers, right? So you're directly putting what happened and whether that was cash in or out. Now, the benefit of this is from an investor standpoint, this is very easy to read and very easy to understand, right? There's nothing ambiguous here about cash collected from customers. That is very understandable. However, there is a downside to doing it this way, and that is net income from the income statement and net change in cash from the statement of cash flows. Those two things are quite different because net income includes a bunch of accrual accounting revenues and expenses that didn't necessarily see a cash flow in that period. And so US GAAP requires companies to reconcile the two, to show investors how does that net income change reconcile to your cash change. And if you don't do it on the statement of cash flows, which if you notice with this direct method, we haven't talked anything about net income. If you don't do it on the statement of cash flows, you do have to prepare a separate net income reconciliation for your investors. So that's the downside of doing the direct method statement of cash flows from the company's perspective. But it is an easy um, version of the statement of cash flows for investors to kind of absorb. Now let's talk about that indirect method statement of cash flows. Here's the deal. This one is going to reconcile net income in the statement of cash flows. All right, and so that's going to be the big benefit is the company isn't going to have to prepare a separate reconciliation because it's already in there. How does that work? Well, remember, it's only the operating section that changes. And in the indirect method, the operating section is going to start with net income. So that's literally going to be the first line in the operating section, net income, insert dollars here. And that's an exact copy from the income statement. Now, as I just said, net income, though, includes cash-related activity and non-cash activity that was simply accrued during the period under accrual accounting that doesn't necessarily involve a cash flow. And so then what you have to do is you adjust the net income to get to your cash from operations. So what do those adjustments include? Well, first all is anything in net income that was not a cash transaction will have to be removed from net income. So what's an example of this? Well, let's think about depreciation expense. Think about the journal entry for depreciation expense. You debit depreciation expense, you credit accumulated depreciation on the asset, right? So there's debit, there's credit. Notice how this reduces net income, but notice how there was no cash in this transaction. So this is a non-cash transaction that is already factored into net income. Well, we've got to get that out because we don't want that as part of our cash from operations because there is no cash there. So that's one of the things you're going to have to do. You're going to have to remove the effect of non-cash transactions. 
the next thing you're gonna have to do is ask yourself, were there any cash transactions that weren't already in net income and therefore we have to put them in? So what is a good example of this? Well, let's say we look at our balance sheet. We look at last year's balance sheet, we look at this year's balance sheet, and we see that accounts receivable went down. Now, what does that imply if accounts receivable went down year over year? Well, that implies that we must have collected some money from our customers. If we think about that from a journal entry perspective, we received cash for a certain amount, and we lowered AR by that amount. Notice this journal entry. It involves a collection of cash, and that collection is from our customers. So that is an operating activity. But notice there's no revenue in here, there's no expense in here, which means this transaction did not affect net income. And since we started this section with net income, it means it's not in there yet. And so we're gonna have to include that effect. So these are just adjustments we're gonna make. We're gonna start with net income, take out all the non-cash stuff that's in net income, add all the cash stuff that's not already in net income, and that is ultimately going to give us our cash from operations. And in doing so, we have reconciled net income and our cash flows. Now, from the company perspective, this is definitely easier and less costly to prepare because they don't have to create that separate schedule. But as you could think that, you know, relative to the direct method statement of cash flows, this is going to be harder for investors to interpret because now instead of seeing like a, a direct line, cash for collected from customers, and then you show the effect, what you're going to see is net income adjusted for depreciation, adjusted for a decrease in AR, adjusted for insert other thing here. And that's ultimately going to get you to cash from operations. That's, that's more difficult for an investor to, to interpret, but it is providing them the reconciliation between net income and cash flows, which is something beneficial to their decision making, and therefore it is still a, a, a useful thing for companies to do. So that's, that's kind of the comparison in a nutshell. To show you two examples of, of what this might look like in real life, um, here's one financial statement for EMC Corporation. It's a little outdated, but, it, but nonetheless, it's a valid example. Um, notice that their operating activity section says cash flows from operating activities received from customers, paid to suppliers and employees, dividends received, interest paid, income taxes paid. It's all very straightforward. And they just show you the amounts. Cash in, cash out, cash in, cash out, cash out. And then they subtotal it, net cash provided by operating activities. So that's a direct method, operating cash flow section. Here's an example of an indirect method. Notice here, cash from operations, first line, net income. And then they say adjustments to reconcile net income to net cash. And here are all of these adjustments similar to the things we talked about. Check it out. Depreciation. They remove that from the effect. Um, asset impairment. Deferred income taxes. Changes in assets and liabilities. And notice there you see things like changes in inventories, changes in accounts payable, changes in income taxes payable. So basically, they are going through and saying, what adjustments do we need to make to our net income to get all the non-cash out of it and add any operating cash that should be in it to it so that we can provide net cash from operating activities? So the end goal is the same. It's just two different ways to get there. And obviously, the indirect is much more complex but it does um, create efficiencies for the company because they don't have to do this as a separate schedule. All right, so that's it for your overview of, of the difference between direct and indirect method statement of cash flows. Remember, it all comes down to the operating section. Everything else in the statement will be the same between the two. Hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.